wackiest and weirdest viral Minecraft block facts that definitely should not work, but actually do. Watch until the end to impress your friends. Top five things in Minecraft that just don't make sense. Right, Number five, redstone blocks and pistons. Okay. For some reason, there's a way for redstone to travel through thin air. Excuse if me, you place a what? block of redstone in the sky huh? and then place a piston what? two Ow, blocks no. below that, the How piston will still that? be activated by the redstone, redstone block. Redstone blocks can do that? Uh, could someone let me know when redstone blocks suddenly gain this magical power of wireless redstone? So they placed three blocks of redstone here, broke out the bottom two, and then placed a sticky piston on the ground. Bro, how is that active? Yo, explain yours. How is the redstone transmitting through the air right now? Okay, does other sources of redstone work? We'll put a redstone dust. Redstone dust isn't activating. That makes no sense. A redstone lamp doesn't activate. It literally only transfers electrical or redstone energy through midair if it is a sticky piston. Wait, does it work with a normal piston? What are the rules for this magical redstone? Okay, it works for any kind of piston, but not any other redstone device. Logical? No. But it is, in fact, a blocked fact. Minecraft slime blocks used to look like this in 2013. Oh, Clouds are invisible that. when seen through slime blocks. Excuse me, Rabbits how? can't jump if they're on a slime block. I love slime you. blocks on pistons <laughs> launch mobs 6.5 blocks upwards. Glazed terracotta won't stick to slime blocks. But when slime why? blocks were first announced, they were called bouncy blocks. <laughs> Placing slime blocks That's underneath brilliant. soul sand used to make mobs move slower than just moving on soul sand. Huh. Players walk on slime blocks at 1.4 blocks they per second, slower? which is 30% really? of their normal walking speed. Subscribe. I guess you can say we're all slime block experts now, but there are just a few facts there that I do not believe are true. They just don't make any sense. So we're going to test them ourselves. First off, we can see slime blocks through clouds. So let's go ahead and place a block up here. Bang. All right, there we go. Now we just need to place down some slime blocks and test it. Wait, is that legit? Hold on, hold on. Let's zoom in. Zoom in right here on the spot. Yo, but how? how? Slime blocks are just like, yeah, yeah no, no, I, I didn't see clouds. clouds. Bro, this is like cloud x-ray vision. I know you can kind of already see through clouds, but this literally just negates clouds. I don't understand why or how this is a feature in the game, but apparently slime blocks are magical like that. Wait a minute. Honey blocks are just like slime blocks. Do you think it's the same for this? Okay, no, nope, clouds are running away. Come back. Yo, it's the same thing with honey. It just says no to clouds. It's just like, yeah, no, clouds don't exist. Why? I don't know, but it is in fact a thing. The next thing that I wanted to test was that apparently, you know, slime blocks will not push glazed terracotta. Now, this could be very interesting to use in redstone builds and stuff, guys, because normally, I'll show you, if we just use any old block, like let's say grass blocks here, put down our slime, activate our, oop, activate our piston, that is going to push the grass blocks along with the slime block. It is a great way for moving blocks, but sometimes you don't want this to happen. Normally, I use obsidian, and that doesn't get pushed either, but apparently, neither does glazed terracotta, which is just so strange to me. So let's surround that at redstone. Three, two, one. It actually is true. And next, is it true that you actually walk slower on slime blocks? This would honestly be the first thing that makes sense, but we'll give it a go. All right, so we'll place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 slime blocks on normal blocks of any kind, stone, grass, whatever. It takes one, two, three, about three and a half seconds to make those 10 blocks. But then on our slime blocks here, let's give it a go. All right, what speed do we got? Ugh, crouch down and start. One, two, three. Four, five. All right, you get the idea. It is definitely slower here on the slime blocks. At least this block fact makes sense. This is how to get the new drip leaf item. In but you can't. They're they haven't been to added to survival yet. Caves, which only come out in Minecraft 1.18. Exactly. So now, you I need just to find said a that. Trader and huh? trade with them for a small drip leaf. Wait. Then place that small they trade drip leaf in drip the water and use bone meal on it to grow. Oh, then you can that use is genius. Yes. I'm so doing that. For us creative players, drip leaves haven't really been a problem because you just whip out the creative inventory, search up drip leaf, and there you go. But for survival players, it kind of sucks. Hasn't been added to the game yet. It's coming in the next update. But apparently, these blue-robed, big-nosed villagers are able to give us a hand in survival mode. So we've got our wandering traders here. Let's check his trades. Okay, we don't have any small drip leaves, but after all, wandering traders' trades are random. So let's spawn in a few more and see if we can get ourselves that small drip leaf. Nope, nothing here. Nothing here. Ah, finally, small drip leaf. Okay, 
So it's not the most common item. I had to spawn one, two, three, four, five wandering traders in order to get one. But if you keep looking, you'll eventually be able to get these in survival. We can get ourselves two small drip lays. You can plant these on some water or some ground, just like so. And then all we need to do is use the bone meal and boom, you got yourself some beautiful big drip leaves and digging them up is as simple as using a pair of shears. We'll switch into survival mode, you guys can see, and dig that up and dig that up. And boom, check it out. Look at that. We got eight big drip leaves. I don't know about you, but that seems like a pretty good deal. Really? And you don't waste your water? Wait, I can double or triple my crops? So if we place down a cauldron in survival here, guys, and I fill it up with water, I lose the water in my water bucket, and I gotta go find another water source, which in this case is all the way over there at the icebergs. But if we go ahead and pick the water out, and we just place it above the cauldron like they did in the video, that apparently fills up the cauldron, and then I can pick that water back up. My bucket is still full, but check it out, guys. The cauldron is also full. So you basically just doubled your water. Now, the next one is really interesting to me, guys. Apparently, fortune on a hoe, a pickaxe, or pretty much any tool will work on crops, except for beetroot and wheat. Guys, we're gonna plant out this little area, and this is all going to be beetroot, alright? 11 beetroot plants there, but this time we're going to plant carrots in here, guys. So let's go ahead, hoe up that ground! Alright, there we go, and plant that all up. So we've got 11 carrots and 11 beetroot right there. We'll chuck this down on the ground, chuck in your hoe, your pickaxe, whatever, and we're gonna put a Fortune 3 enchanted book on there. So we've got our Fortune 3 hoe. Now, I'm not gonna make you guys wait forever, so I'll see you in a bit. And thanks to a bit of bone milling, we're done. So let's switch into survival mode to you guys. We'll dig up our beetroots and see how many beetroot we get. All right, boom. All right, so with beetroot here, using our fortune hoe, we got 23 beetroot, which is still more than 11, but I'm pretty sure that's just because beetroot multiplies when you dig it up. Now, we're gonna get rid of the carrots in our inventory here, guys, and test it out with the carrots. All right, so let's dig up the carrots. Now, this apparently is where our fortune will work with our hoe. So let's see how many carrots we get. All right, we've dug it all up. And holy flipping moly, what? Guys, that carrot stack of 64 is still there, but we got 64 plus 33 carrots. That is so many more carrots than we got beetroot. So yeah, definitely I'd stick to basically any crop but wheat or beetroot. Number 35. If you ask me, it's fun to build things in Minecraft that don't make sense at a first glance. <laughs> I agree. Like, take a look at this pond, what? for example. How As it appears, blocks? the stone pattern is he... placed off-center from the actual grid. But what's actually happening huh? is that we're using waterlogged stairs and slabs to Wait. keep those textures, Yo! and then make the blocks That's around genius. the way. And while it's a fun gray. surprise to pull in your friends, I also think it looks quite nice as well. <laughs> Alright, we've got ourselves a nice little pond going on. It's a little bit scuffed, but we can deal with it. Normally, if we had just oak plank blocks, we could only place them in a grid like so. Like, they have to be placed in those block spaces. But according to this tutorial, if we place four oak stairs here, guys, all kind of next to each other, so they, okay, wait, how do we do this? We gotta make them all be corner stair blocks. So we gotta point right in that corner, place, bang, and then point right in the center corner there, boom, and then right again, right in the corner of all those blocks. Okay, that, that didn't work. I need them to corner. There we go, just like that. You guys can see it actually looks like a physical block is there. But then you can place another block here. And suddenly you have these blocks off center that look super weird and wacky. Like what? That isn't even Minecraft, guys. And you can place these under the water like so. And if you wanted to use this as like a decorative pond, nobody would even be able to tell. It would literally just look like off center blocks. And let me tell you, this is a great way to troll your friends. Pretty much you can use this with any block that has a stair variant. Like, look at all the possible blocks you could do this with. We could do it with copper here, guys, and we could have a normal copper block, and then just over here, we could go ahead and make ourselves a spinning round copper stair. Come on, give me a corner stair. There we go. And just like that, guys, these are off center like so. Bang. What is this? This is a great thing to use for stepping stones or just decoration. That is so dope. I'm, I'm gonna be putting these all over my builds. Bro, that ain't gonna work. See, nothing. Wait, we're building a bigger end portal above it, destroying the frames, and leaving just one end portal behind? Wait, no, you can't push end portal, huh? Huh? Pistons can push end portal blocks? Now, this is for sure a block fact that I had no idea existed. So, we'll build our fake little mini end portal. If this works, this is a great way to troll your friends here, guys. Put in our end pearls. As you can see, that ain't working. But then, what they did is they built another end portal here, guys. That was exactly one block above this one. We gotta get this right. Alright, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, like so. And then, if we place end pearls in all of these correctly, we should get an end portal. Bubba! And then they went ahead and destroyed out all of these frames. Now, 
I don't really know how you do this in survival since you can't destroy end portal frames like that. But either way, let's go ahead and destroy those portal blocks. So currently, this is one block above our mini portal, so it doesn't look quite legit. But apparently, all we need to do to push this open is go ahead and build up a piston. So let's go ahead and build up like so. We better not cover that bottom portal. Then we need a piston facing down. Oh, okay, this is going to be tricky. We have a piston facing downs without getting in the portal, just like so, guys. Down. Oh, wait. Okay. Oh, i got to be really careful here. Bang. All right. So that's just above our portal block, just like so, guys. And now, now we just need to place a block above and our lever and that should work Are you ready guys three two one bam excuse me pissed it pissed it why are you not pushing that end portal bro bro excuse that piston is literally just frozen it's got stage fright what did we just get clickbait? I think we just got clickbaited. I'm not going to let him get away with that. We're exposing this clickbaiter. I rewatched the video, and I'm not going to lie. They literally just edited the video and added in a cut, which is such a lazy way to clickbait. And so I'm going to show them how to actually clickbait. I'm really hoping no clickbaiters are watching this, guys, but I need all of you to be ready for when somebody does try and trick you so you're aware what's going on. Basically, they had this repeat always active command block that is looking for this lever, and when it detects that this lever on here is active, Activated, it's going to set that end portal block to air. Then the next thing it's going to do is then activate this chain command block, which is going to set an end portal right where we want it to. So we'll go ahead and turn this on. Bang. All right, now we've got to do is hit the lever. Boom. And check it out, guys. We got ourselves our end portal down. I mean, it looks more realistic. And I mean, that's kind of more clickbait. But uh, there, they just used a video cut. That's why their piston wasn't broken. But if we go ahead and update this piston, oh, just like so, boom, you can see it is going to come back. So we got no issues there. But uh, next time, clickbait, at least try and make it look more realistic. Or, or don't. We don't We don't stand for clickbait on this channel, guys. We stand against clickbait. So subscribe if you're against clickbait like I am. Did you know that cross paths can pass through ice? Really? So this is a normal grass block. Uh-huh. Okay, that see, makes sense. Pass through, but then a grass path. Yo, where'd the item go? And let's go and see the hoppers. And as you can see... Oh my goodness! That is an awesome way to hide hoppers, through. guys. Now, if you guys don't know how to make paths, basically you just get any shovel and you dig up grass blocks like so. And that's going to give you these path blocks that you see in the villages. Now, we're going to place some hoppers underneath to collect our items and see whether or not we can actually get an item to pass through a normal block or whether it's only going to pass through these path blocks. So we'll go ahead, chuck our diamonds on this side. Yeah, those definitely are not going through whatsoever, guys. We check the hopper underneath. Absolutely nothing. But when we chuck them on the path block, let's see. Boom. They're literally disappearing right now. What? They are phasing through the grass path, and you can see they're filling up the hoppers below, which is just so strange and weird. I don't know how this works. It's literally this one pixel difference makes all the world of change, guys, which is really, really odd. This would be a great way to hide your hoppers to collect, like, secret items from your friends. Anyway, guys, for our next block fact, you're actually going to watch the next video because that's all the time we've got for today. I'll see you there. Until then, anyways, you're mad. Bye.